So let's go into more detail with lightning here. Just before we were just asking why it is that uh, thunder and lightning aren't heard at the same time, or at least why they don't arrive at the same time. That's because thunder, the sound, travels really slow compared to the lightning, which travels really fast. So now we go into more detail and actually say, all right, lightning strikes one kilometer away. How long does it take for the flash to reach you? And how long for the thunder to be heard? In other words, we're asking, you know, how long will it take each of those to reach you? So we're going to use not necessarily the wave equation. Remember the wave equation was just V equals F lambda, but it really came from this idea that speed is distance over time. Now, sometimes it's useful to use the wave equation, but here I just wanted to show you that we can also use just distance divided by time. In this case right here, just straight distance over time. So this will actually be much easier than you might think, and that's just because the speed here is just going to be the distance divided by the time. So in this case right here then, we have to know, well, how fast do each of these go, and how long will it take to reach? So if we write v equals d over t, you know, instead of v, uh, speed is distance over time, then if I want to solve for time, I could multiply both sides of the equation by t. That would put it over here. So then I would have t times v equals d. And then I want to divide by v to get the v out of here. The idea is I want to get t on its own. So therefore, I can say that the time is going to be written as just the distance divided by the speed. This is sort of what I'm going to be looking at here. Okay, so I'm going to use this. Now I have to know something about the speed here. So the speed of sound, we talked about this before, it's approximately 340 meters per second. Whereas the speed of light, which is known as C, we usually rewrite this as C, and that's just 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So in that case then, let's say I want to look at these two different situations then. So if I look for light, how long will it take for the light to reach you? Well, if the distance is one kilometer, that's a thousand meters. So that means that the time is going to be this distance right here. So that's going to be a thousand meters. And that's going to be divide that by the speed of light, which in this case is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The good news is the meters are here will cancel out. And 1 over 1 over seconds actually puts the seconds on top. So then I get an answer. Well, I just have to do 1,000 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8. I can do that on my trusty calculator. So 1,000 divide that by, and I'll put it in brackets, 3 times 10. 10 to the 8, and I get an answer of, well, 3 times 10 to the minus 6. So I'm going to say it's approximately, because I'm only using one significant figure here, so approximately 3 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds. That's not much time. I mean, if you really wanted to write that down, that's like 0 0.000003 seconds. That is quick. Okay, that's because it's 3 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3 times 10 to the negative 6. That's what this is. Whereas, instead of the light, we can look at the sound. By the way, that was the lightning. Just so you know, at least, that's the lightning reaching you. This is the thunder. Okay, so the lightning, it only takes 3 times 10 to the 6 of 3 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds to reach you, whereas thunder, which is sound, is going to follow this. So the time it's going to take is still going to be a thousand meters, that's still the distance it has to travel, but we divide that by the speed of sound, which is only 340 meters per second. Again, the meters cancel out, seconds go on top, so I'm going to get approximately, so this time I have to do a thousand divided by 340. And if I do that, I get, well, pretty much three. Notice this is about three here. So it's around three seconds. So three entire seconds. Notice the difference then. So this is a really important thing. Okay, lightning, it took it, you know, 0 0.000003 seconds to reach you, so really fast. Whereas the thunder takes a whole three seconds. And actually, I like to use this little trick right here. So this is, we've answered the question, but I like this little trick here trick. If ever you hear thunder, I mean, if you look at this, this is pretty much 333, 
I mean, this is close to that number. And the reason why I use that number is because it's approximately, so pretty much three seconds for every kilometer away. So what do I mean by that is that if you see lightning, I just start counting. I go 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3, and every time, every three seconds, that's one kilometer. So if it takes six seconds you know, from when you see the flash of a lightning until you actually hear the sound of the lightning, in other words, you hear the thunder, that's it took six seconds, then I know that, well, every three seconds is one kilometer, so if it took six seconds, that's two kilometers away, and so on. So you can sort of tell if a storm is coming closer to you by sort of timing the distance between those. And if it gets less and less, that means a storm is coming closer to you. Or if it goes farther away, then you know it's going away from you, and so on. I've actually experienced, uh, my friend and I, we were actually biking. And um, when we actually were up near the mountain, um, there's a big lightning storm that hit near us. And at that point, the lightning was hitting all around us. And so there, there was pretty much no delay between the lightning and the thunder. In other words, it seemed like trees were exploding around us. And I have to admit, it was actually quite scary. I also experienced that when climbing once. This uh, friend Karen and I, we were actually up uh, rock climbing. And when we reached the top of a mountain, we actually saw a big, big thunderstorm coming by. We're like, uh-oh, we'd better run down. And actually, when we did that, then lightning started striking all around us as well. It was actually pretty scary. But hopefully you stay away from the thunder and lightning because they are the same thing, but basically stay away from it. You don't want to get hit by this because it's a lot of energy passing through you and that is not something you want. But at least this example, I think, shows just the difference in time it takes for thunder to reach you and lightning. And I have one last example here. This time uh, we're looking at water waves. We have water wave crests in the ocean and we're going to say that they're three meters apart. So maybe I'm even going to draw this this time. So Maybe let's just look at this. So here we've got a side view, and we're going to have some nice water waves. I've drawn them blue. And let's say, so these are here, they're 3 meters apart here. So 3.0 meters. That's the distance here between these crests. And they pass by an anchored buoy. I don't know if you know what that is, but sometimes in the water they put these little things there. So maybe maybe this is like a little, it's a little thing that floats. And it usually has a little flag at the end of it and it allows people, let's say, on a boat to sort of know what's happening here. And usually it's anchored to the bottom so that way it doesn't move around too much. But we're just going to assume this thing right here basically stays in the same position. It either goes up or down, but it doesn't really go left or right. That's the whole point of this. So this anchored buoy, and we know that these waves pass by every 1.5 seconds. And the question is, how fast are the waves going? Because we're going to be basically implying that the waves are actually traveling to the, let's say the waves are going to the right here. So that's the direction of travel. So let's say that means this little buoy right here is going like up and down and up and down as these waves right here travel. It's a little bit hard to understand or to sort of draw, but let's just say I could, I'm not sure if this is going to work here. What if I move this? Yeah, so as, just imagine you're this little boat, this little thing right here, okay? Now, you're not going to see it moving, but just imagine you're this. You can only go up or down. So watch this position right here as I move this right here. Let's say as this wave passed over here, now it'd be up high. And as the wave passed over here, for example, it'd be down here. And as the wave passed again, it would go up higher. So basically, as this wave travels, okay, so this wave is going to go like this, whoa, like this. During that time, this little buoy right here is going to go up and down and up and down and up and down. So the question is, what's the speed of the waves? So what quantities do we know? If we look at this, then the water wave crests are three meters apart. That is a unit of distance. That's this. So that would be the wavelength. So now we know the wavelength is 3.0 meters. And anchored by the buoy, and they hit every 1.5 seconds. Now, if they hit every 1.5 seconds, that is a unit of time. So what they're really telling us is that's the period. So we know that the period is 1.5 seconds. And they're asking for the speed of the wave. In other words, we want V. That's what we're looking for, is V. So we have V, and we have this equation, this wave equation of ours, V equals F lambda. So I'm going to write that out. So V equals F lambda. Now, if only I knew f, I could do this, because I know lambda. Lambda is 3, but I don't know f. 
Now you could actually calculate f first. Remember over here that the frequency is related to the period. f is 1 over t. Or you could sort of see it as all that within the same equation. So we could actually calculate f separately. So we could say f equals 1 over t, and therefore f is 1 over 1.5. And we get an answer, and then we would plug that into here. Or we could do it all in one step. If we realize that f, remember, if f is 1 over t, we could actually just replace that with this f here. So instead of f, I write down 1 over t. So 1 over t, all that times lambda. I know all that. I know 1 over t. 1 over t is going to be 1 over 1 1.5, and then all that times lambda, which is 3.0 meters. And this here is, of course, going to be seconds. And 1 times 3 over 1.5, well, 1 times 3 is still just 1. So that means this is just 3.0 divided by 1.5. That's just what we're doing here. And 3 divided by 1.5 is just 2. But if I'm using two significant figures and two significant figures, then I'll say 2.0, just to make all the significant figures line up here. So I would say this is 2.0, and what are the units? It's meters per second. So meters per second. And I like that, that you can tell you've done it right, uh, you know, just by looking at the units. I'm actually just going to say s to the minus 1, because that's normally how we say it. Or you can say m per s, some people write it like that. Basically, these things go 2 meters per second. So I think that's a good example of how to use the wave equation in a nice, simple way. Although we did have this f we had to sort of calculate. In this case, I just incorporated it into the equation, but it doesn't matter how you do it. As long as you understand about wavelength and period, then you can actually see that we can use this wave equation for lots of different things, right? Not just for radio stations, but also for things like water waves or even light, all sorts of situations. This wave equation, super important, super helpful, your best friend when you're working with waves.